as I've promised online and uh, to you listening, I'm now going to go into the latest that we have on the Mahuta family influence, uh, in particular looking at Three Waters. And actually we're going to um, expand beyond the uh, Mahuta family in, in particular here. Uh, because there are some other issues that that, that should be included um, in this. Uh, there are three reasons we reckon that uh, there must be a truly independent review into Three Waters. I do just want to say um, thank you to um, the anonymous Twitterer, Thomas, who um, prefers to remain anonymous, but who has done a lot of research and, and really su supplied a lot of information to me. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, also, I will acknowledge that um, given that we, you know, haven't been around for very long, I do reference the New Zealand Herald a little bit in, in what I have to say here. So good on them for, for their reporting on that. So a former Deputy Prime Minister and two former senior ministers, all from different parties, are calling for answers from Minister Nanaya Mahuta and the Labor government in regards to perceived conflicts of interest and lack of transparency around Three Waters. In a Facebook post, Jacinda Ardern's former Deputy Prime Minister, Winston Peters, said, quote, The fact is, it looks like a wink-wink, nudge-nudge approach to the process of these appointments and cannot go unchallenged. It just adds yet another level of the mud-like clarity that surrounds the commissioning and content of the Hapuapua report, end quote. Former Labor Minister of Local Government and Minister of Health, Dr Michael Bassett, is more direct and uh, quite a lot more scathing of Minister Mahuta. He says, quote, As can be seen from the way Nanaya has been engineering her family into lucrative positions of influence, her vision of co-governance will involve corruption on one side and democracy on the other, end quote. Very strong words there. Meanwhile, former National Cabinet Minister and 30-year MP for Pakaranga, Morris Williamson, appeared on the platform this morning to speak with Sean Plunkett. He called for Peter Hughes, the Public Service Commissioner and Head of Service, to take a look into the appointments of Minister Mahuta's family members. We reached out uh, to the Public Service Commissioner's office and were told that even if complaints came to them, we they would have to push it back to the relevant CE of that agency. So not really clear there. The growing chorus of calls for transparency from the government follow the platform's reporting last week of the many influential and lucrative roles Nanaya Mahuta's family members have been appointed to. With the example of the investigation into Judith Collins' alleged and since disproven undermining of the then head of the Serious Fraud Office, Adam Fairley, by an independent High Court judge as a precedent, there are three key reasons there should be a properly independent review in two, three waters. First, the already reported issue of Doug Martin's role as chairman of the government's working group to review Three Waters. Late last year, the opposition raised concerns about Doug Martin's independence, given he is the founder and former director of Martin Jenkins, a consultancy firm which has had extensive involvement with the Three Waters reform. Quoting a DIA spokesperson, the New Zealand Herald reported at the time, Quote, he said that while Martin was a founding partner of Martin Jenkins, he exited his ownership interest some years ago and only occasionally undertakes assignments for clients when asked through a contract relationship, end quote. A spokesperson for Minister Nanaya Mahuta also told the New Zealand Herald at the time, quote, there is clearly no conflict of interest here. Doug Martin has neither had an ownership interest in nor been director of Martin Jenkins for some years. However, under its term of reference, the Three Waters Working Group was tasked with reviewing and analysing the work already carried out. This was to include a Martin Jenkins report dated 6 December 2017. And what does not appear to have been reported as of yet is that the report lists Doug Martin himself as an author alongside his colleagues Paul Clark, Philip Baron and Morgan Hanks. He would therefore be reviewing a report that he wrote. 
Doug Martin was appointed chairperson by Minister of Local Government Nanaia Mahuta in consultation with the President of the Local Government New Zealand. Additionally, one of Martin Jenkins' current directors, Nick Davis, was contracted by the Department of Internal Affairs to be Chief St Strategic Director for the Three Waters Reforms and to lead the Secretariat for the Reform Programme Steering Committee. Another director and shareholder of Martin Jenkins, Michael Mills, has also been contracted by the department in regards to Three Waters. To date, more than $2.5 million have been paid by the government to Martin Jenkins consultancy firm for work on the Three Waters reforms. Coincidentally, Doug Martin, through Martin Jenkins Consultancy, is now leading an independent inquiry into fluoride mismanagement by Wellington Water in regards to which conflict of interest concerns were also raised. Second, is concern around the common legal provider used for the Hepuapua report and the Three Waters Working Group, a firm called Kahui Legal. Although the firm is undoubtedly highly qualified and was clear of legal conflicts to undertake all of their work, there are questions to be answered as to whether all potential commercial conflicts have been managed to mitigate public perceptions of problematic conflicts of interest. Those commercial conflicts could include the interests of their large clients, such as the iwi Waikato Tainui and the Maniapoto Māori Trust Board. Although different Kahui legal partners advised each working group, it is evident that similar co-governance advice was set out in the Hepuapua report and the co-governance presentation given by Kahui legal partner Jamie Ferguson to the Three Waters Working Group on 17th December 2021. It is worth noting that the Kahui legal partner who advised the Hepuapua Working Group is the then wife of Minister Kerry Allen, who is called Natalie Coates. The significance of Kahui Legal's other clients is bolstered by the fact that Minister Nanaia Mahuta is an iwi member of Waikato Tainui and Mani Apoto. The Mahuta Fano are powerful and influential within these iwi. For example, Tipa Mahuta, the Minister's sister, was appointed as iwi co-chair to the Waikato River Authority by Waikato Tainui. According to former New Zealand First MP and new chairperson of Te Ara Tarua, the executive arm of Waikato Tainui's parliament, Tuku Morgan, Waikato Tainui is also already focusing on how they can maximise opportunity regarding Three Waters. He says, in addition, Quote, history tells us that Western democracy really amounts to the tyranny of the majority, so how then are we supposed to participate in a real, meaningful and significant way? End quote. By we, he means Māori, and, and this I've taken from a stuff article um, which interviewed um, Morgan, um, in which he, he kind of made clear uh, that there are opportunities for Waikato Tainui in the Three Waters uh, deal. And the third reason for a truly independent review into Three Waters is something we've already discussed. The appointment of Tipa Mahuta as chair of the Māori Advisory Group of Tau Mata Arawai, the new water regulator, which will directly regulate the four water service entities following the reforms. The platform has already raised the issue of Minister Mahuta's family members being appointed to key roles, but this role required a statutory appointment. Such was its significance. There needs to be transparency around how Minister Mahuta was able to remove herself from the process of appointing her sister to the role, given that she had to be involved as both Minister of Local Government and Minister for Māori Development. In order to address the very obvious conflict of interest, there was a temporary transfer of the appointment power to Minister of Crown Māori Relations, Calvin Davis. But this begs the question as to who was involved in the initial selection of Tipa Mahuta for the role before the transfer of powers occurred and how the ongoing conflict of interest is being managed now. Tipa Mahuta is also the co-chair of the new Māori Health Authority. There is no suggestion that any of the key reasons outlined involve criminal activity. This is about whether management of obvious and in some cases admitted conflicts of interest is satisfactory and presents no undue impact on the highly contentious 
Three Waters reforms. These reforms are contentious, and despite the government's refusal to facilitate any kind of public conversation, the topic is being discussed up and down the country. New Zealanders are concerned about co-governance, three waters, and what is seen by some as an attack on our democracy. There must be an investigation into what we've laid out today. At the very least, it has caused a public perception of multiple conflicts of interest, and the Cabinet Manual makes it clear that perception is very important. It strikes me that Nanaia Mahuta might want to clear this all up pretty quickly, as it is not going away. Surely there is good documentation of the procurement processes and mitigations she would want to make public and put the entire thing to bed. Likewise, this is a terrible look for Labour and the Prime Minister. Perhaps on her return from the States, she might like to get the situation ironed out. Anyway, what do you think? Investigation or not? Mountain out of a molehill or something to take seriously? Please give me a call on 0800 332283. What do you think we should do about this situation? Is it something that we should be concerned about? I also have to confess a deep frustration with the mainstream media for determinedly ignoring the subject with the exception of one report by Kate McNamara for the New Zealand Herald, which was popped behind the paywall. I think McNamara is an excellent journalist and she deserves, deserves some credit. Other senior members of the press gallery have publicly stated that they don't think there's a story there. I find this incredible. Is it just me? This is a huge story in my view. Am I wrong? Uh, I feel like uh, I'm sitting here um, reading this and, and every time I, you know, we find something new, my mind is blown that this is not being discussed on a wider scale. We can have an investigation into this without, you know, thinking that there's criminal charges to be laid or anything like that. There's no suggestion of that. It's about whether one of our country's most contentious pieces of legislation um, and most impactful kind of um, insidious policies of co-governance um, is getting pushed through with the help of serious influence um, from one particular family and, and one particular iwi. I, um, I noticed that stuff has rebranded themselves uh, suddenly and uh, they say they're a, a nationwide media company that's independently owned for a nation of independent thinkers. No. Paul, you could stop laughing, Paul. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I also note that they are feverishly following the drama of Kamal Santa Maria's exit from TVNZ. But the influence of the Mahuta family and the serious issues with Three Waters? Nah, not a story. I could tell you, I've spent 40 years working in newsrooms. Yeah. Um, in all sorts of roles and been there for some of the biggest stories you can ever imagine. <clears throat> right there. I was the one who told the nation about the massacre down in Christchurch. I remember those yeah. moments. And I'm telling you, everyone would have been all over this. Mm. Something has changed. What, what's going on? Well, it's willful, obviously. Mm. I, just, um, I just don't get it. They're running cover. Yeah. I just don't get it. Um, the Herald also has the Santa Maria story on their front page, same as News Hub. It seems a scandal involving um, competitors is more tasty than reporting on potential conflicts of interest involving one of them. I think it's called our... a misdirection play. Oh, I just... Oh, so frustrating, Paul, honestly. You know, the, the Amber Heard... Do you want a cuppa? I'll go I, get I, you I a cuppa. A, I need a bloody cup of tea. I just... To, as, as Sean says, a cup of tea and a lie down. Because I just... It, it just baffles me. I mean, I know I know that uh, Sean likes the Amber Heard Johnny Depp story as well. So I'm not, you know, I'm not casting dispersions, but like the amount of um, attention New Zealand media has given to a defamation trial in the US between 
two actors who once were married and clearly hate each other, you know, compared. And, and the front page of the, the poor chap at TV and said, we don't know what's going on, the family emergency, but it's hardly a national <laughs> level story like this. Exactly. I just, I'm so baffled. Um, News Hub even has a, written an article about a humorous tweet um, about the, quote, crappiest fountain ever, unquote, by the husband of the British High Commissioner uh, in relation to the Cuba Street bucket fountain. And then the High Commissioner's put out her own humorous tweet saying it was not the position of the British government, blah, blah, blah. Can I just say, as a New Zealand citizen who was born in Great Britain, that the bucket fountain is indeed the most lame fountain ever. Like... Well, I think you could argue that. Oh, There's no. There's something about its randomness uh, and craziness that oh. says, says something. But I just... Uh, if you don't like it, no. look at something else, walk past... Yeah, well, uh, uh, exactly. Another piece of art. <laughs> but, you know, that's a story, right? That's being reported on. But no one had the time to sit down and have a look at some of these yes, details. Yes, they did. Of course they did. They they know everything. They're just not reporting it.